Hello everyone out there in COVID-19 land. How are you? Thanks for joining me once again. JT here. And today's topic, out the front knives. Should you own one? Pros and cons of ownership, practicality, legality, expense. All these questions I am going to answer in this video. Now, as a knife guy, I've always loved practical knives. Knives that are practical, knives that I'd like to get my value for as far as bang for the buck. And I've always looked at OTF knives as a gimmick. I don't know, it's like, ah, what am I gonna do with that thing? I, I've always saw it as frail. Um, you know, being that I have a little bit of mechanical background, I always thought, eh, the more stuff that moves, the more stuff you have, opportunity for that thing to go wrong. So I never bought one. Um, also, the state that I'm in, they're uh, kind of, you know, parts of the state are legal, parts of the state are not. But I am going to revert to this video and tell you to look up your own state laws and act accordingly. Always carry your firearms and your knives according to your state laws, all right? So that's what I'm going to revert to that. And stay tuned to this video because at the end of the video, I'm going to give you a website that is a phenomenal point of reference so you don't have to stay uh, online Googling for 20 minutes. This this is a phenomenal website that I did uh, some research on, um, you know, don't don't just think I don't just think I'm pressing record and doing a video. I I do a lot of research, a couple of days worth, and write a lot of stuff down. And I have a this kind of scripted as far as the information I'm bringing out to you guys. So I'm not just you know doing this off the cuff. I do a lot of research, and I like to give a nice informed video so I can educate people. So Glock 26, Benchmade Adamus. And Adamus in Greek means indestructible. And if you've ever heard, held this knife before, you will know why. As far as practicality, hell yeah. This is to me what Benchmade should have named the bug out because this thing is a tank. I don't know where you guys came from bug out with the name of that frail thing. But anyway, look at the practicality here. Glock 19, nice small package, lots of rounds. All right, you have a knife that is even though it's really bulky, it is a tank. This thing is going to last you forever. Quick deployment. Steel is phenomenal. But anyway, OTF knives. Why should you buy one? If you're on the fence of buying one, if you already have one, if you are in the process of... If you have an OTF knife in your cart and it's been there for a year, I'm sure you're going to make a decision by the end of this video because I'm going to try to educate you as far as the pros and cons of owning an OTF knife. So let's get right to it. Let's put this aside and that and some things that I needed. Oh, by the way, you see this knives for free thing. I am not giving them. Uh, well, I can't inadvertently. I am giving that advertising. They sent me this for free, so I'm using it. People send me something for free. I'm going to make a video out of it. Um, I'm going to tell you guys. And by the way, I, I got to give a shout out to Nick Shabazz. He was, he's, he's one of my favorite websites. If you haven't checked him out, check him out. But he has this thing about the good, bad and the ugly. I'm not gonna copy that, but I'm gonna use this. Muy bueno, bueno, and no bueno. Muy bueno meaning very good, bueno meaning good, and no bueno is very, very bad. So if I say muy bueno, bueno, and no bueno, now you have, now you have a reference as to what I am talking about. So what were my criteria for buying this knife? Number one, I want it to be made in the US, all right? Number two, I want it to have to be backed up by a reputable company with a lifetime warranty. And number three, reputation. I wanted something that had a great reputation, something that I can say, you know what, if I buy this thing, I know the company's gonna stand, by, stand behind it and I'm gonna have this thing as an heirloom piece. What did I get? What do you think I got? I bought a Microtech. The reason I got this is because it seems like with all the research I did, it seems like this is pretty much the go-to when it comes to OTF knives. I know Benchmade is out there, Guardian Tactical. Um, you know, there's 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 a lot of stuff out there that you can just go nuts saying, should I get this, should I get that? This is what I got just because it seemed like the right choice. And right now they're going for about anywhere from the, the low threes to high 200s. And, but anyway, let's open this sucker up. This is literally my first time opening this. I just 
had the box I got the box right here i just opened it up i mean why should i show you the box but i, I just wanted to make sure that it was the right thing because i have a couple box laying around and i don't want to do an unboxing video of a microtech knife and it be a bench made or something so let's open this sucker up let's see what we get again i've never owned, opened this before all right what we have here we have a card telling me to register my product okay that's a good idea we have a manual that tells us about knife care warranty information Ooh, there's a kydex sheath Ooh, i might have to look into that operation uh, that should be pretty self-explanatory but you'd be surprised. Some people need to get pointed out what the dangerous end of a gun is. So I guess I can understand that. All right, let's open this sucker up. So what I bought here was the Ultratech. Oh man, look at this thing. I've seen so many pictures and videos of this thing, but finally this one's mine. I chose the gray. And if I remember correctly, I chose a two-tone blade. I'm gonna give you the specs of this in a second. What do you guys think? What's your first impression? Man, this is this is this is cool. Well, my first impression here is that it's beautiful. It's got a nice. Uh, I think this is the ball bearing glass breaker here. So let's go over the specs here, man. Of course, I, I, I'm dying to press this. I can I do it? Should I do it? Yes, let's do it. Whoa, man! You cannot inadvertently deploy this knife. Let me tell you, that comes out with authority and that is you have to actually have a, a purpose to make this deployed don't do not worry about this thing coming out in your pocket by accident that is a myth and um, and it's been confirmed because i am putting a good if i were to compare this to a firearm oh my goodness i'm gonna guess 12 pounds of pressure but anyway what we have here we have a length total of 8.36 inches. Let me try to center this really here, right here. And don't make fun of my ruler because this used to be my mom's, God rest her soul. She used to use this for sewing. And yes, 8.36 inches. Let's measure this blade. The blade is supposed to be 3.35 inches and that's what we got here. As far as steel, if you check out their website, they say that for 2020, they have three steels or actually four. Carpenter CTS 204P, uh, XHP, the Bowler M390, and of course the LMAX. I have bad vision, so I cannot see what this is. Does it say what it is on the bottom of the blade? I can't see. And again, this is my first time opening it, so I haven't had a chance to get my uh, specs on and see. Look at this thing. Man, this thing is sharp. Wow. Should I bother cutting something? Nah, you, you know it's sharp. This thing came from the factory sharp. Um, so good job, man. I am I am very pleased with this thing. This thing is awesome. I'm glad this was my first OTF knife. So why? Why? Oh, by the way, the weight is 3.05 ounces. Let's do some comparison here as far as what we're looking at. Uh, all right, I have a Benchmade Grizzly Ridge. Let's see what else. For your motorcycle people, this is oil pan boat for 2005 Honda VFR. We have a Batmobile. How about that? And if you were a child of the 90s and were into Nirvana, here's a hacky sack. Um, do you like my comparisons? I think that's just a... a, a uh, thing that I, <laughs> a little bit of humor I want to hear. So, like I said, this is my, this is going to be my key for reviewing knives. You got the muy bueno, bueno, and no bueno. So let's go over that as far as the pros and cons of ownerships, ownership of an out the front knife. First of all, again, I'm going to refer to your local state laws. Let's see. Let's put this aside here. Okay, cons, and yes, high tech, only high tech for you guys. Is it legal? You have to check your local state laws. Um, there are some states out there that say, no, you cannot own this. As far as, as far as why, I really can't understand this. I think this is just a reputation that Knives had from movies back in the 1950s and, you know, Hollywood that Whenever there's a bad guy, they go, they come out and the Hispanic guy comes out and says, oh, give me your wallet. You know, that type of stereotypical crap that Hollywood does. 
Um, and uh, I just think it's got a bad rep because of that. As far as some people thinking that this thing is going to go through your neck, if I were to deploy it, that is another myth. And I'm going to show it right here. This is the registration card. And I'm going to try to deploy this right through it. And it's not going to do that. What happens is there's a safety mechanism built in within the knife that does not allow that to happen. Okay, so to reset that, all you have to do, according to the website, let's see if it works, is do a little pull up here and you have just reset your knife and you're back in business. Okay, so that's another myth. Um, is it legal? Check your state laws. Okay, you don't want to take the chance. And also, it doesn't have to do whether, it, it's not only determined whether it's legal or not, it has to also do with your prior conviction history. I know that in some states it is legal, but if you have prior conviction histories with felonies and, or violent felonies and things of that nature, you cannot carry it. So check your local state laws, all right? So as far as being able to carry something under three inches, something like that, you're good to go. But if something happens and God forbid, you're in a state that says this is a no bueno, no bueno thing, then guess what? You're going to be in a heap of crap. Expensive. Yes, it is not cheap. For the price of this, you can get yourself a really good bench made. You can get yourself one of these, all right? Um, and you can tell that you get a lot more knife with this than this. Um, so they're not cheap. That's because there's a lot of there's a lot of science and there's a lot of mechanics going into this knife. So it's not cheap. If you're looking for a cheap knife to carry, look somewhere else because you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to shell out your wallet for this thing. All right, con number three, is it durable? Hmm, that is interesting. And this is, this is one of the things that made me stay away from OTF knives for a long time, but I've done, again, I've done some research and this is a lifetime backed up product here. They say that they will, they will guarantee or warranty this thing for a lifetime of ownership. And, you know, I'm not familiar with exactly if it's, if it's a Benchmade type of uh, warranty. I know Benchmade is pretty much no questions asked. You send it in, we'll take care of it. Um, and they will be able to take care of your knife. Bench, uh, it seems like Microtech is a little bit more finicky as far as their warranty and as far as what they'll cover. Um, so let's keep going here. Liability. Now, this is another really interesting question. Let me give you a scenario because I like to think worst case scenario here. You carry this for self-defense, okay? You're out with your lady or your partner, whatever, and you, you're getting mugged. You take this thing out and you defend yourself. I guarantee you, if you were to hurt, injure, maim, kill the person that attacked you, the first thing that the defense attorney is going to do that defends the other guy that's in cuffs sitting next to you is say, oh, well, you know, my client is a victim of this person carrying this automatic weapon, and uh, this seems excessive and inhuman and all types of stuff. Trust me, I'm familiar with how defense attorneys work, and that's the first thing they're gonna attack while you're on the stand, is you having something that seems to be excessive, intimidating, illegal, and whether you were justified or not. This person could have could have held another knife to you, or a bottle, or a crowbar, or whatever, and I guarantee you, if you defend yourself with this, and you succeed, that is going to be the number one thing that a defense attorney is going to bring up in the case to try to defend that criminal. I guarantee it. So keep that in mind. I know it's, it's I'm playing devil, devil's advocate here. We've all heard about stories that, you know, you come, a criminal comes into your house and guess what? You greet him with this and guess what? Now you're on the stand saying that you use excessive force or you should have used a baseball bat or this guy was lost and he... Uh, you know, just wanted to ask directions and you shot and killed them. So keep in mind, defense attorneys are going to attack you if um, for any reason you should happen to use an automatic knife. And I'm telling you that because I know. All right. Number five. Is it practical? I don't know. You got to ask yourself, is it practical? Can you do everything with this knife than you can with this knife? Well, you can open mail with it. You can cut. You can dice. You can slice. You can do 
pretty much anything that you that you want to do. Um, but just keep in mind, it's a micro tech. So if you pry with it and you break it, I don't think they're going to cover it. Should let, I know someone that used a Benchmade to try to fix their car and they pried with it and they sent it to Benchmade and with 30 bucks, they replaced the blade. That is a great company. Microtech, not so much. Um, they're not going to do that. They're probably going to charge you for it. And who knows? I, 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 and I may be, I may be wrong, but as far as, as far as what I've seen and I've heard and the research that I've done, they're not as lenient. Um, I like to bring knives to restaurants with me to cut my own food. Now, if I come out with this <laughs> and all of a sudden, you know, they hear and I'm cutting my steak with this, I'm sure someone's going to make a phone call. Whereas, you know, if I come out with my my uh, my Grizzly Ridge and I start cutting my steak, you know, different story. I think that probably is going to be seen a little differently. But um, today, for example, I was doing some sheetrock work in my house. And yeah, I use this knife. Why? Because I don't just, you know, carry my knives for show. I actually use them. I like to make sure that I that I use them for what they're intended for. And that's to be used as a tool. Can you use this knife as a tool? Yes, I've seen people abuse this thing. I've seen it been thrown from second story floors. I've seen it bashed. I've seen it, someone just took it and, and, and balled it down to the ground. And this thing still fired. So this thing is built very, very well. I can tell you that from all the research that I've done. Okay, so we've got some cons there. Let's see what some pros are. Of course, with my high-tech uh, system here. All right, so pros. The one thing of owning this knife, and that's, I think we're all on the same page here, the cool factor. Is it cool? Uh yeah, it is muy bueno when it calls to when it comes to cool. Muy muy bueno. That is good. It's just a, some. If you've seen those movies, man, even 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 the bad guys when they whip that thing up, ooh, you, something inside you say, hey, that's pretty cool. I want one of those. So the cool factor with this is 110. percent This is like this is this is an adult spinner. Man. This is cool as can be. So that's number one. Number two, is it safer? Well, let's see. If we're to open a regular knife, there's a lot more involved here than opening this knife. I have to actually put my hand on the blade. You know, my thumb comes near the blade. Uh, when, I, when I close it, I have to either one-handed like that, or if I have to close it this way, you know, my, my hands are on the blade. So it's a possibility that someone can get cut. And I get cut all the time handling blades. So to me, I don't have to touch this at all. If I need to use this, it seems like a pretty safe way of deploying the blade. So, hey, I say that's a pro. Investment. I know of people that have blades like this, knives like this, and they've sold it. And you know what? For the most part, they get their money back. So I think, hey, it's not as good as gold or silver, but you know what? You spend 290 bucks on something like this, I bet you can get your money back within a couple of years because these things are not getting any cheaper, have you seen on websites. Um, okay, quick deploy. That is, I think, one of the pros that led me to purchasing an OTF knife. When I carry a knife, I carry a knife with a purpose, okay? I, I dress up depending on what I'm doing for the day, where I'm going, and I choose my knife accordingly, okay? If I'm going to a restaurant, I would probably pick something like a uh, bug out or uh, an Osborne or something like that, that, you know, is kind of low profile, is light. If I'm going somewhere like, you know, if I'm going to go to the bank and I'm carrying a lot of money, making a big deposit, you know that I'm going to pair up something like this with something that uh, is a little beefier or, or something to that effect. You know, if I'm going to do some construction, if I'm going to work all day long around the house, then I might carry something that might be more geared towards construction all right so as far as quick deploying i use my knives as a support to my firearm so i am right-handed so i carry my firearm on the right side and i always carry my knives on my weak side why well if ever i would need that for weapon retention or anything to that effect or if my firearm should happen to fail um the first thing that i'm going to do probably is go that's my plan b and I've, I've trained like that, um, and that's, that's, that's just my go-to, okay? I've never, 
If I carry my firearm, I usually carry an Emerson blade where I can quick deploy that from the pocket and it's already there. I'm just trying this out to see if I like it. I'm gonna, another negative thing about this that I haven't brought up yet, it is not ambidextrous. I don't know if I can loosen this up and switch it to the other side. If you know if I can do that, make some comment, comments because I'd love to do that, okay? I don't think I can carry this as a, I'm, first of all, I'm going to be deploying this with my left hand. I can't carry it with that type of configuration if I'm going to be using it, using it for self-defense. Also, I've tried and I've trained um, to use this right here, my Adamus, as self-defense. Uh, and it takes a while to, number one, take that out, deploy it, and then get yourself in a defensive position. A lot fast, a lot quicker than, uh, I'm sorry, this is a lot slower than your Emerson type of deployment, which you basically you pull it out, it's already ready to go. So if you're, if you're thinking about self-defense, make sure that you are training that way and you are very efficient with that type of deployment. All right, and lastly, pros. That, by the way, that was self-defense. You're right, okay? If you have the right to carry something like this, I'd say carry it, all right? Because you know what? If, if you don't exercise your rights, guess what? Your rights are going to get tired. And it's the same thing with your body. If you have it, use it. If not, you're going to lose it. Same thing with your rights. Make sure that you exercise your rights. Now, as far as this knife specifically, there are some things that I saw that just, again, muy bueno, bueno, and no bueno. The good is... You have, you have a lifetime warranty. That's awesome. Number two, you have a great reputation. And number three, it is USA made. Now, some things that I see as a negative, if you like to tinker with out the front knives or with knives in general, this is not the knife for you. They are telling you right there in your manual that they do not want you taking this thing apart. They don't even give you the type of tool that you're gonna use to take that tool apart. They don't even tell you. So if you need to take this thing apart, guess what? You can't, you have to send it back to Microtech, all right? Uh, another thing is, what about sharpening? Hmm, I've already looked into that for you. They tell you that you should not sharpen it either. They're telling, they're telling you that if you need this thing sharpened, you should send it to them. I don't know what they're gonna charge, um, but they are telling you if you like to sharpen all of your knives, guess what? This is not the knife for you. I like to sharpen my own knives. So that may limit your usage of this knife. If you say that you don't, that you like to sharpen your knives, but you're afraid of this knife getting dull, you might not use this knife as it's originally intended. So that might be a big negative for you also. So if you like to beat up your knives and you like to sharpen your own knives, I'm gonna say this is not the knife for you. I would say, Go back to uh, Benchmade and you know what? I'm going to do it. I, I, I didn't plan on doing it for this video, but I'm going to do it. This is a Benchmade. And if you want to, oops, hold on, hold on. Da, 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 da. Where'd that thing go? Here it is. I'm going to open this for you just because I love you guys. Here's a precipice. Okay. Ah. <sighs> Oh yeah, wow, a lot lighter. This is cool, this video is not about this knife. Man, first impression, lighter, a little bit more, the, the, uh, the trigger is a lot more friendly. But anyway, if you were into beating up your knives, sharpening your own knives, I would say this is the one for you, okay? Stay away from your Microtechs. That's just my own opinion. If you're a Microtech person and you want to prove me wrong, go ahead. Make, make your comments on there. If you're Microtech itself and you want to shoot me an email or, or say, hey, listen, um, we, have, we have a great warranty service and we'll do X, Y, and Z for you. Go ahead. Prove me wrong. If you want me to test something, you know what? Send it to me. Send it to JT, P.O. Box 14736, Rochester, New York, 14614. Or if you just want to send me some stuff and me to put it in your in, the, in this, these videos, I'd be more than happy to put it on my next video. So that's pretty much 
the bueno, the muy bueno, bueno, and no bueno. If you're saying, you know what, you're right. I think this whole uh, carrying an OTF is not for me. Then I do have a recommendation for you. Start out slow. How about this? What is this you say? Well, this is a Boker. And uh, the Boker Plus. It's a Kalishnikov, I think they call it. And it's pretty. How about this? If you don't want to be intimidating, what do you think? Bam. It's an automatic. It's a Kalishnikov uh, Mini, basically, is what this is. And this is really cool. Um, man. This has got a nice action to it. You know, it's it's not very intimidating. But if you want something that's auto and you want to satisfy that need for having an automatic knife, bam, there you go. Less than 30 bucks. And you got a, you got yourself an automatic knife and it's less than three inches. Um, I think this is even California legal, if I'm not mistaken. That is a two and a three quarter inch blade, if I'm not mistaken. And bam, the reason I got this is because it was on sale and <laughs> I didn't care, whatever. I don't mind carrying this stuff, it's cool. So that's pretty much it. I thank you very much for hanging out with me here today. And that is my review of uh, my first impression of my first OTF Microtech knife. This is my second one, Precipice, I might do a video of that one later on but let me know what you think good bad ugly uh bueno muy bueno bueno no bueno sorry i didn't want i didn't mean to say that i gotta get used to saying that give me your comments subscribe please i would greatly appreciate it. you would honor me if you would subscribe to my channel because i have a lot more stuff coming up i greatly appreciate you i promise when the weather gets nicer i'm going to do some motorcycle videos um, in the comments, if there's something you want me to review, more than happy to. If there's something you want me to review that I don't own, feel free to send it to me. Be more than happy to do that for you. And this is JT saying, be safe, keep the shiny side up, take care of yourself, and wash your hands. Peace.